Good day. For this video, we'll be learning partial derivatives. So what are partial derivatives? Take this for example. If you have a, a, a function w, which is a function of x, y, and z, you have here on a three-dimensional axis, x, y, and z, you have a surface here. Let's just say this is a part of a circle, one-eighth of a circle. So that would be the surface. If I ask you to solve for the partial of w with respect to x, that means you have to solve for the derivative of the function taking only x as a variable, meaning that y and z should be treated as constant. So comparing this to normal derivatives, normal derivatives would look like this. For example, dy over dx and something like that. However, for this case, you can't do the normal derivatives wherein the d are the upright d's. Why? Because w here is a function of x, y, and z, meaning um, it's changing in three dimensions. So for example, you would like to solve for the total cost of painting a room. And then the room consists of painting the walls, and then painting the floors, and painting the ceilings. So the cost of painting the walls are different from the cost of painting the ceilings. And then the cost of painting the Floors are also different. So in order to solve for the total cost, you have to account for each of those. So in partial derivatives, it seems it's just like saying you would like to solve for the cost of painting the walls only, meaning you have to treat the others constant. So just getting the cost of the walls without uh, looking at the cost of the uh, ceilings and the floor. Just like that in here. Um, you're asked to solve for the partial of w with respect to y, or sometimes it can be written as f of x, y, z, and then there's a 2 at the bottom, meaning partial derivative of um, the function x, y, z with respect to the second variable, which is letter y. So let's go to some examples. For example, in here, you're given number 1, f of x, y, z is equal to 2xy plus y cubed minus 4x cubed z squared. So in this case, number letter A, you're asked to solve for the partial derivative of x, y, z with respect to x because x is the first variable. So that means y and z should be treated as constant. So it can also be written as partial of f with respect to x. So meaning y and z are treated as constant. So if y and z are constants, I can move 2 and y, the derivative of x with respect to x is 1. And then since y and z are both constants, this would be 0. And here, 4z squared is a constant. And then the derivative of x cubed would be 3x squared. So all in all, your answer would be 2y minus 12x squared z squared. Whereas in here, f of 3. So that means the third, it's with respect to letter z. So this one would be, if x and y are both constants, this one would be 0. This would also be 0 because it's purely letter y. So 4x cubed is a constant. And then the derivative of z squared is 2z. So the answer in here would be negative 8x cubed z. Let's go to another example. For example, w is a function of x, y, and z in here. So you can say you're asked to solve for the partial of w with respect to x, wherein y and z are taken as constants. So in here, since y and z are taken as constants, 3 times 2x, so 2y squared, that's a constant, and then the derivative of x with respect to x is 1, and then y and z are constant, so that's plus 0. So this one would then be 6x minus 2y squared. In here, you're asked to solve for partial of w with respect to y, because that's the second variable. So in here, x and z would be the constants. So that means <clears throat> x and z are constants. The first term would be 0. 
2x is a constant and then getting the derivative of y squared that would be 2y and then plus 4z the derivative of y is 1 so this is negative 4xy plus 4z let's go to another example in this case partial of z with respect to x so that means y is constant so in here you can move uh, the constant out and then the derivative of e to the x is simply e to the x and then in here x and y are both inside the ln so that's an, they're both the arguments but then since y is a constant i can say the derivative um, of an ln is 1 over xy times the derivative of the um, term here which is xy the derivative would then be y times 1 because x is the only variable and then y is a constant so in here it would then be e to the x sine y plus 1 over x whereas partial of z with respect to y x is the constant now so e to the x i can move it out the derivative of sine y would then be cosine of y plus similar to what we had before since both of them are in the argument that's 1 over x y however since x is a constant i'll move it x out and then the derivative of y with respect to y is 1 so it's e to the x cosine of y plus 1 over y for this case you'll notice that it is a higher partial derivative but then it's written like this and if it's in this notation the first one it would be from the right to the left so meaning you have to do the partial of w with respect to y first before getting the second partial of w and then with respect to x so let's do this first if we're getting partial of w with respect to y and then y w is a function of x y and z that means x and z are constants so here since x and z are constants x squared and then the derivative of y with respect to y is 1 the derivative of y is 1 and then x and z are both constants so that means the answer would be x squared so the partial of w with respect to y was the first one and now you're getting the partial with respect to x this one could be rewritten as the second partial of w first is with respect to y and then with respect to x so in this case y and z are the constants so x is a variable so the derivative is simply 2x sometimes um if for example if you see f to one of let's just say x y and z this is similar to saying d to one of w which is a function of x y and z or similar to saying partial second partial of w so first is with respect to y and then with respect to x or partial of w with respect to y and then getting the partial again with respect to x so these are all similar so let's go to this meaning this one is partial of w first is with respect to x next is with respect to y and then next the whole thing is with respect to x again so let's solve for the partial of w with respect to x first we're in y and z are taken as constants so that means y is a constant the derivative of x squared is 2x y is a constant that means that's zero z is a constant and then the derivative of x is 1 so here 2xy plus z and then now we're getting the so i hope you understand this one now let's go to the next one next is with respect to y so that means 
if I write it in the D notation, we started with the X first and then now we're going to do the Y. So looking at this, it's with respect to Y. So that means X and Z are constants. So in here, X and then Z is a constant, so that becomes 0. The answer would then be 2X. Lastly, D, 1, 2, and then 1, you're doing the third already. So that means getting with respect to X, Y and Z are constant. So the answer would be 2. Next is this one, what's being asked. Partial of W, let's just say with respect to X. If it's with respect to X, Y and Z are constants. So since Y and Z are constants and those are found in with the cosine, we can bring out the cosine. The derivative of X squared is simply 2X. So this one would be 2X cosine of Y minus 3Z. Now if I ask you partial of W, with respect to y, so you mean x and z should be the constants here. So since x is a constant, I bring that out. But then, since z is together with y there, I have to get the derivative. So the derivative of cosine is negative, sine of y minus 3z, and then the derivative of inside. The derivative of y is 1. The derivative of 3z, which are constants, is 0. So in here, it would be negative x squared sine of y minus 3z. Lastly, partial of w with respect to z. So in this case, x and y are constants. So since x is a constant, just bring it out. And then z is inside together with the cosine. So we have to get the derivative. It becomes negative sine of y minus 3z since y is constant it becomes zero negative 3z derivative with respect to z is negative three so let's close this this becomes 3x squared sine of y minus 3z i hope you can follow next here you can see here the chain rule. So what does this mean? If for example in here you're given w as a function of x and y, x is a function of theta and y is a function of theta, and then you're asked to solve for the normal derivative of w with respect to theta, in order to do that, we apply the chain rule. So when you look at this, it's sort of the total derivative of w with respect to theta is the partial with respect to x times the derivative of x with respect to theta. So it's sort of like the contribution of x and then here on the right side, the contribution with respect to y. And then you'll notice these, um, the first terms are partial. So this is a partial. And then this is also another partial. Because w is a function of two variables. And then you're getting the partial only with respect to x first and then partial with respect to y. So let's just try that. For example, w is equal to x squared plus y squared. And then x is tangent theta, y is sine theta. You know that w is a function of x and y. x is a function of theta. y is a function of theta. If you're asked to solve for the dw, with respect to theta, it would then be partial of um, w with respect to x, wherein y is constant, you'll be getting 2x. Partial of w with respect to y, wherein x is constant, you'll be getting 2y. Then, looking at x and y here, the derivative of x with respect to theta is secant squared theta. The derivative of y with respect to theta is cosine of theta. So dw over d theta, applying the chain rule, would then be dw with respect to theta is partial of w with respect to x times derivative of x with respect to theta plus the contribution of y. So partial of w with respect to y times 
dy over d theta. And then substituting each of the answers, you'll be getting this. However, since x and y are both functions of theta, maybe we can express the x and the y as thetas as well. So this is what you get up as the final answer. What's being asked here is, basically, let's just say, dw with respect to theta. In order to do this, basically, partial of w with respect to x times dx with respect to theta plus partial of w with respect to y times dy with respect to theta. So let's solve. What's partial of w with respect to x? We know that in this case, y would be constant. So you have an ln, that's 1 over xy times y, the derivative of x is 1. So your final answer is simply 1 over x. The partial of w with respect to y, wherein x is constant, is 1 over xy times x and then derivative of y is 1. You have 1 over y as a final answer there. Now, dx with respect to theta, the derivative of tangent is secant squared theta. dy with respect to theta, the derivative of secant is secant theta tangent theta. So that means applying this formula, partial of w with respect to x is simply 1 over x times dx with respect to theta is secant squared theta plus partial of w with respect to y is 1 over y and then secant theta tangent theta and then at the end maybe we can substitute what is x x is tangent so secant squared theta over tangent theta plus y is secant theta at the bottom so secant theta tangent theta over secant theta so maybe we can cancel that out to simplify and then if you want you can still simplify this secant uh, is 1 over cosine and then tangent is sine over cosine so if you want you can make this cosine theta over sine theta times 1 over cosine squared theta. So you can cancel out some terms. <clears throat> You'll have cosecant theta plus tangent theta as your final answer. So I hope you have learned something from me. Thank you very much.